partnership for international birding. Um, in about two minutes, I'm going to introduce Edo, and that'll be a fairly fast process. Um, and I just want to lay down a few ground rules for the call. One, we're we're always we just want to we always invite participation and questions. And so, if you have any questions at all, you know, please put them forth. Um, and if you don't want to interrupt the uh, speaker at the time, you can always text your questions in to either me or Arturo. And so any texting you do, just text away. Um, we truly want to include all questions of all to all time. My really good friend, Sarah Bradley, just joined in. Uh, good morning, Sarah. And, um, and uh, you know, our goal is just to kind of keep the questions moving, but we have found a sort of more casual style has worked really well for these calls, these Zoom presentations. Um, so the quick, um, oh, and Guido is at the feet, at the feeders at his eco lodge. Um, he doesn't expect anything great today, but you know his hummingbirds are better than my hummingbirds, so we'll take them. Um, and we may have time for a little walk around his lodge. In the meantime, he's just going to share some photos from birding in paint Panama, and we're going to talk about birding in paint. Anima. Um, so just a few things on Guido. He's been a bird guide in Panama for 25 years. Um, again, his lodge sort of opened up for professional ornithological research, research, research archers in Panama. After that, it was sort of opened up to tourists. Um, and he's been guiding in paint. Anima professional research archers and tour and tourist groups for over 20 years. Um, and truly he's well known in paint Anima not only for his bird guiding, but his support for ornithological stuff study and support for bird conservation. He's got a uh, master's degree in tourism management and uh, an environmental biology degree from the University of Panama. Um, with no further ado, Guido, talk to us about some birding in Panama. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning, almost good afternoon. Hope you guys, everybody's doing great. Containers. Um, I am using actually two, two devices. I'm not sure if you can see me. Oh. Hello there. That there we go. Um, so I have um, my laptop and my cell phone. For some reason, my my um, my com my laptop's camera is not working. So, so give me a name of your laptop. Which which what's the name? So I can probably add it here. So the laptop says Guido Berguido, and it's got the audio and the slides, and the other one that says. Uh, Guido Berguido's cell phone is the, the one that works with the camera. Okay. I'm not sure how we, this is going to work out. Yeah. <clears throat> We're trying to get Guido on board with exactly. both his computer screen and his um, to share some photos and then also his uh, his uh, Cam his phone because I'm going to try to show you a few birds with that and and there you go. So you should so, be able to have camera now on both. On both? Let's see. Well, nope. Nope. Um, video, spotlight video. Nope. Okay. Um, so, well, you can hear me with one. and um, We can see you anyway. Yeah, can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, we can see you. Yeah, both. yeah, we'd love to be able to see your computer screen. Yeah, I, I will share my screen is what I'll do here in a minute. There we go. If I can find how to do that. <laughs> uh, let me see. Hi to everybody. Okay, here we go. Sharing screen. Thanks everybody for your patience here. We should have this sorted in a second. Okay, yeah, here I go. Super. Now we're seeing your there screen. There we go. There we go. Put, put it like on full size screen and that's it. Like presentation mode. Okay. There you go. Right? Perfect. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. Great. 
All right. So, Tito, uh, tell us about, uh, yeah, shoot. Yeah, thanks so much for the invitation. Um, I am delighted and yet challenged by this, um, this, <laughs> this presentation because I'm expected to tell you the best about Panama in 20 minutes or so, <laughs> which is quite challenging. Uh, you may uh, uh, be familiar with some of our birds before, uh, and I'd like to I'm going to try to tell you in about 10 or 15 minutes why Panama is such a fantastic place for birding and nature in general. And well, let's start off by giving you an idea of where we are in case you're not familiar with our country. Um, it, that's little Panama there uh, in the red circle, right in the middle between North America and uh, South America. Okay, bordered uh, further northwest uh, with Costa Rica. And on our eastern southern side, we'll have then Colombia, okay? And you know that South America is the continent of the birds. So we're right being, being right in the middle of the two continents at the crossroads, we're certainly uh, enjoying the best of both worlds, as we like to say it. So the first reason that, that we have such an incredible diversity of, of wildlife and birds in particular is that we're in the tropics. And by definition, being in the tropics means that we have the ideal conditions for um, you know, the, the rainfall, the humidity, the um, sunlight um, availability, and the temperatures that are ideal for, um, for wildlife to flourish, right? Um, in different colors, different shapes, and different sizes uh, as, as your wildest imagination can go. Of course, when you come down to the tropics, even though your uh, main interest is probably birds, you will be stuck because there's plenty more to see. We have certainly more than 10,000 species of Lepidoptera, butterflies and, and moths. We have lots of frogs and other amphibians. We have all kinds of um, rainforest animals like this uh, three-toed sloth. Uh, or we have more than seven species of little monkeys. This is the smallest one of them, the red-necked tamarind monkey. And of course, all the way up to the main predator in the rainforest that actually I've never seen myself in the wild because it's very rare, elusive <laughs> and nocturnal. And that is the jaguar, which is the, uh, certainly would be spectacular to see one from a distance probably, but fun nevertheless. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to see one in the wild yet here in Panama. And of course, they will see some birds. Uh, this is a beautiful spectacled owl. Uh, is, is really spectacular to find, especially at uh, certain locations that we have in, uh, in the, around here in, in, our, in our neighborhood that we can go and find them at the daily perch where they hang and sleep during the daytime. Uh, in, the, in the wilderness, you have a chance to actually see more interesting game birds like this, beautiful, uh, great crossouts. And if we're lucky, we can also find some macaws. In Panama, we have five species of macaws in general. Overall, we have more than a thousand species of, um, of birds in Panama, which is more, greater number of species than all of the United States and Canada combined, okay? As a matter of fact, I'm hearing here in the background a black hawk eagle calling. Imagine that. Oh. It's a beautiful, oh. Well, Later, we can try to check them out if we can spot one soaring up above the sky. But anyway, I mean, we have, even though we're a tiny little country, roughly the size of the country of Austria in Europe, or the size of South Carolina, we're a very small country, we have an incredible diversity of bird life, okay? And in the next few minutes, I'd like to explain to you the many reasons that allows us to have, despite our tiny size, such an amazing diversity of, of birds. One of the interesting examples I like to use is this beautiful uh, violet-bellied hummingbird that actually sometimes comes here in our feeders. And um, in our feeders here, we have about 16 species of hummingbird that have been recorded coming and going around here. But I like to mention them because in the tropics, we have, um, in Panama, we have more than 70 species of hummingbird. And that is one of the reasons is that they've been able to adjust to different sources of food, like this giant flower that you probably know as well. And they have been able to evolve into different sizes, different shapes of bills to accommodate or, or to adapt themselves to feeding off of 
different kinds of flowers, which is, of course, their main uh, source of, of um, sugar. And of course, when we have our feeders, um, later I'll try to show you, but you can find different kinds of, of hummingbirds attending feeders in overall in Panama. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of the places and sites that you're going to be visiting when you come and visit us uh, on a tour to Panama with, with PIB. And our main area where we spend a bit of time is the canal area near Panama City. The Panama Canal area is this, you can see the yellow circle there showing you um, where the Panama, the Panama City is on the southern part or the lower part of that circle and Gamboa where we host uh, most of our trip where I'm, I'm transmitting from right now is right in the middle, dead center on that circle. It's in the middle of the Panama Canal. And this is great because even though the, the canal area from the Pacific Ocean there on the, on the lower part to the Atlantic side, which is in the upper part, um, is very close by. It's only 50 miles or 80 kilometers from the Pacific to the Atlantic. So literally, you could drive it in under an hour from one ocean to the other. That's why the Panama Canal was built here, uh, because it's so close by. But even though they're so close, there, the, um, there is uh, some mountains. I really like, I'm going to be using this map in the background of Panama, because you can see the mountain ranges. Can you see that? Yeah. So those mountain ranges, even though um, you may not think of much, especially at the isthmus here in the canal area, where they're so close, 50 miles apart, yet the, the forest on the Pacific coast is completely different from the forest on the Caribbean side because there is a, a rain shadow effect created by the mountain. So the Pacific side gets an average of four inches of rain each month. So some of you, especially if you live in Arizona or Texas perhaps, four inches of rain average a month may seem like a bit of rain, but here in Gamboa where where we are right in the middle between the one ocean and the other, we get about eight inches of rain each month. And all the way over on the Atlantic side, they get 12 inches of rain each month, which is a whole lot of more rain, okay? So from four to eight to 12 inches of rain within a, an area of 50 miles apart means that there's a huge diversity of uh, wildlife as well. And here you can find beautiful birds like this beautiful killbill toucan, which is of course one of the most charismatic um, birds in our yard here, literally. We have three species of, of toucans right here in our yard, the killbill, the yellow-throated, and the colored arasari, which is a smaller one. We have a bit of uh, woodpeckers. This is a cinnamon woodpecker, a really nice little bird, beautiful coloration. And we have a lot of other uh, tropical families. This one in particular is called the chestnut back ant bird. Okay, it's a beautiful bird. You can see the, the pale, uh, the bare eye um, around it. And this is a song wren, beautiful. And we also have our share of uh, fly catchers, those little fly catchers. This is um, a yellow crowned uh, tyranulet. Imagine in Panama, we have over 100 species of fly catchers. They come in all different sizes and colors. This is a yellow um, golden crowned spade bill very small you can see that you, you can get a good view of the bill it's a very thick bill and they adapt themselves differently to different prey items different bugs that they will eat it's interesting so why, why am i showing showing you a picture of, of ants because there's a whole lot of birds that you will see during our trips that are called ant birds or ant tanagers or ant ant burials ant shrikes and um I mean, every, all different kinds of, of birds that are, have ants in their name. And it's not necessarily because they eat ants, but because they hang out around ants. That is the case of this uh, bicolored ant bird. This is a spotted ant bird. This is an oscillated ant bird, a really beautiful, um, handsome little bird. A rarity, a highlight indeed, when we find one of those in the forest because when the ants are swarming around the forest floor trying to eat all these um, the other arthropods and bugs like cockroaches or grasshoppers or um, spiders, all these ant birds are hanging around trying to uh, eat them, okay? And um, this is um, a black crown ant pita, also often sometimes hangs out with the ants. It's a really spectacular bird, black crown, very rare, pita soma. 
But interestingly enough, not only ant birds come and hang out with um, with um, with the ants, but some tanagers as well. That's why we have some ant tanagers. And this one in the picture is actually a great headed tanager that likes to hang around with the uh, ants as well because they take advantage of whatever insects they're flushing out and about. We also have a bunch of wood creepers that come and take uh, part in this party that takes place. That's a, such a flurry of activity around the ant swarms uh, that you have. Uh, this is a black striped wood creeper and so on and a few other species that come along. I was, I was mentioning earlier that we love to bird around the canal area. That's why we spend quite a bit of time around here because even though it's a small area, only 50 miles from one ocean to the other, you have different kinds of forests. This is a view of the drier forest. You see a, a lot of the, the trees are bare there, have no leaves. And that is during the dry season, they shed, they shed their leaves. And uh, of, sometimes you also have a, a bit of, um, um, of scrubby habitat or second growth. And this is a land-sailed mannequin that likes to be in the scrubby habitat. We also have, of course, having two oceans nearby, we have our fair share of wetlands, okay? We have, uh, uh, this is a mangroves, the red mangroves, and each kind of habitat has a different kind of bird. This is a straight-billed wood creeper, and straight-billed wood creepers uh, are typically found in the mangrove forest. So it's really interesting. Of course, we have some water birds like this, and hinga, a male and hinga. We have, uh, this is uh, Amazon kingfisher, and so on. Later on in, in the- Hey, Guido, 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 Guido. Hey, let's just see if we've got any questions out there. Please. Um, so we just covered, um, we, don't, we don't have to race through this, my friend. Let's, let's break for a couple quest, questions here. So um, we just spent a little bit of time with Bert, Bert, Erding in the Panama Canal zone. Guido, how far drive time wise is Gamboa from, which is basically the Panama Canal zone area? How far is that from the Panama City Airport? About 45, 60 minutes or 45 something? 45 minutes without traffic, 45 minutes with the traffic, it could be about an hour <laughs> transfer from the, the international airport. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then all of these birding sites that we just hit, we just hit you know some dry forest area. We just hit the mangrove wetlands, forest. Um, the Panama Canal viewing point itself. All of this, how far is all all of that drive time wise from from your lodge in Gamboa? Everything is uh, within twenty minutes or the the canal of the, the lookout, the Miraflores Locks. It's about 25 mm -hmm. minutes from, from Gamboa. Mm -hmm. We're right in the middle, so, stuck in the middle there. So all of those birding spots, and, and on our typical 10 days tour, we spend about two or three days, I'm sort of asking the question, two or three days birding in the canal zone area. Is that about right? Well, in the canal area is so bird rich, got over 500 species of birds in the canal area alone, that we try to maximize yeah. our, our visit here. And we spent three days at the beginning and then two days towards the latter, latter part, just to break it up a mm -hmm. little bit. And so we spent up about, what, six, six days around, five to six days around here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. over those, you know, five, six, six days of birding in the canal zone area, typically how many of the trip birds do you get just within a half hour from lodge? You get, I mean, they, there's a potential for 500 species, but we probably get about 275 species, 200 and roughly 270 species in the in this general area. Mm -hmm. Right, and so a, a total birding trip with um, you know about 400 species in it, um, almost three fourths of the birds are right there. Right there in the canal zone area. Absolutely, everything is so accessible. Different kinds of habitats: uh, second growth forest, old growth forest, humid forest, dry forest, wetlands, savannas. I mean, everything is like within half an hour to an hour from here. So it, it's really specific. yeah. So so truly, without a lot of driving, without a lot of moving around. A nice thing about Panama birding is. You don't have to drive far, and you don't have to change lodges a lot. 
they get a lot of birds. In our yeah. yard, right here in Gamboa, where I'm, where I'm talking to you from, we get uh, over 200 species of birds in our yard. So if you don't want to go at all, you can just sit here and uh, you, I mean, you can look at our, our eBird hotspot online, look up, uh, so we call it Soberania Lodge in Gamboa here, and we get over 200 species of birds in our yard. Actually, I'm gonna switch, nice. um, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, uh, to show you, you got anything I have sexy on the bird feet eater? We're gonna have a look at the yard now. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. Can you see this? Oh, I'm sharing my screen. Should I stop sharing the screen? Or? I can see out the window. I can see. I can see some trees and like a yard. Yeah. So, so the problem is that when you do it while you're sharing your screen, then we only got like a tiny window on the left. So I think it will be better once you're done sharing your screen, then you can walk around the feeder. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we'll take a walk around the feeders later in the conversation. Hey, does does anybody in the group? have any questions at all we get anything on the text or you can just jump right in and feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question about any of the canal zone area birding anybody got any questions at all uh, somebody's getting the feedback loop go ahead what is the name of the lodge oh uh so we're in the lodge. So it's yeah. Do you want to spell it for people, you know? I like think I can. I think I can. I will, I will tap it down on the chat so you can go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 I've got it here. It's 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 right by a national park, Soberania National Park. I'll 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 type it into the text to everyone. So that, that that was a question about the name of the lodge. So it's Sober Rainia. Sober. Mm -hmm. Yep, that was one. Rainia. <laughs> I come from the lodge. And lodge. And there you go. Boom. You're repeating a lot yourself, Charles. What did you say, buddy? That you're you have a lot of echo there. Oh, is that me? So Guido, before we continue, like, uh, there's someone who wants to know what about the restaurant that's in Quetzal? Yes, that's where we're going next Actually, in the slideshow. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so after we bird in our program, in our itinerary, after we bird a couple of days around the canal area near Panama City, we take, a, we take a domestic flight, which takes under an hour, like 45 minutes or so, to fly from where we were in Panama City in taking the domestic airport to Western Panama that I have you in the, in the slideshow here, okay? And um, there is where we go see. Uh, what's interesting is that Panama has, uh, even though it's tiny, the, it's very diverse, it's very, it's very different rather, one part of the country to the other. So by flying uh, 200 miles or so to Western Panama, we come across like half of birds are, are completely different. Okay, like this for instance is a, Black hooded hey, before bird. before we go on to that, any any other questions about canal zone birding at all? And then we'll jump on to Cherokee and Western Panama. Any other questions? You can text them. Yep. All right. So hearing none, we'll uh, go ahead and jump off to Western Panama and Cherokee. Yep. And uh, we start with a flight from Panama. Itty from the domestic airport to a little town called David. David right. And here's Guido back again. Sorry, but I just trying to get some questions. So, again. right upon yep. our arrival at the domestic airport, I mean, depending on the time we, we get there, so you know, sometimes uh, there's some flight delays or whatever, but usually we get there early enough, like at eight o'clock in the morning or something, uh, that we get to bird the grounds around the airport. And we literally hit the ground running because even the common birds around the airport are different and not, we, we wouldn't see them in central Panama in, in the canal area. So this, for instance, is a black-hooded antrike, which is a regional endemic that is shared right at the border between southern Costa Rica and western Panama. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the regional endemics we like to see. Another one is a hummingbird called the Beraguan mango that is also a, 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 an endemic just between 
Panama and a little bit of Costa Rica that we can expect to find there. But certainly the highlight of traveling to Western Panama is the a possibility of traveling, traveling up to the mountains. Uh, the highest mountain of Panama is the Barú volcano that rises to uh, 11,000 feet high, okay? We will not be venturing all the way up the summit there, but as soon as we hit 6,000, 7,000 feet, we start finding very cool birds from the foothills and mountains. This is the beheaded tanayer, and the higher we go, the more unique birds we find. This is a sooty cat bush tanayer, or torospingus, which is also a, a regional endemic to this area. This is a, a hummingbird. It's a white-throated mountain gem, the female white-throated mountain gem, really cute little one. This is a black-billed nightingale thrush, also a, a, a regional endemic to this area. And the black guan, this is a, a game bird, uh, also near, uh, in danger of extinction because it's so uh, good to eat <laughs> by the locals. <laughs> but it's a really cool endemic uh, to these mountains between Panama and Costa Rica. And of course, the highlight of the trip is one of the most beautiful birds in the whole world, the resplendent Quetzal, which is always a highlight uh, to find in that cloud forest over there. Okay. Um, hey, um, Guido, I, I know we've had this question before, but um, I mean, have you ever had a trip to Western Panama where you missed the resplendent cat's ass off? Uh, wow. Not yeah, very I know. Not, that's almost yeah, always so, yeah. so very rarely, if ever, have you missed the resplendent cat's off. We, we, and in, in recent fact, years, it's been right in the parking lot, right, of this yeah, site exactly. that you go to. We know where, usually right. we, we, keep, we keep in touch with our local guides and our friends in the, in the sites. So that they tell us, oh, the, there's this avocado tree fruiting in our neighbors, or there's this one in that other farm. So we stay in touch with our colleagues on the ground that are there year round and are able to tell us which is the area most likely to be seen. I mean, one thing that we uh, would love for you as participants to appreciate is that we're flexible. I mean, uh, if, if anything happens, let's say if the, all the trees in our area are sick or something and they're not delayed, fruiting or something, we would move on and, and with your um, willingness, of course, we would modify the itinerary and go to another part of the park or another town where the quetzals are being seen. We make it a point to see the quetzals because it's such a spectacular bird that is certainly worth making a special effort to try to see. Indeed. Qu yeah, now, now, tell me a little bit about the orange collared mannequin. Is that also a slam dunk yes. bird or is that? The orange collar mannequin actually we, we see at the airport upon our arrival. The, <laughs> yeah. the orange collar mannequin hangs around the, the domestic, the, the airport in, in the Vichy yeah, it's, it's so really I think, I think we had a question from the group. Anybody yeah. got a question? Yeah. I Ken, Ken Cole here. Can you hear, hi, can you hi, hear me? Ken. Uh, yes. are, you going, are you going over to Bocas de Toro and those new sites, the new lodge over there? On this itinerary that we normally do well, on the 10 day program, we do not go all the way to the Caribbean side. No. Uh, but can you do tours to get you up to Tranquilo Bay and, and we, the sites that they, uh, some of the groups are going to? That, that is a, it's a possibility, yes. I mean, unfortunately, we only have 10 days to do everything. <laughs> but but can we, we can sort out an extension and truly yeah. just, I mean, depending upon the group, I mean, most Panama Central American birders, it's you know, it's the first or second birding trip. I know Ken, you've got a um, pretty extensive life list. I I, I know because we did an Ecuador trip for you right. about five six years ago, and you thought maybe you'd get twenty eight species, and I think you got thirty five. Um, and these are light birds, to be clear. But um, yeah, so 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 Ken, if we need to sort out an extension to that Caribbean side, we can either you know, add it on as a group thing and see if others are interested or there's actually, that's a separate sort of guiding group over there and we can, we can sort you in that direction as well. So call us anytime and we'll get it. Yeah, I mean, that Ecuador out. trip was essentially a custom, custom trip. Um, yeah, I know. Me, me and one other person. <laughs> and that's what I would have in yeah, Panama at some time. Post yeah, yeah. So post anytime we can help you with that, we'd be glad, glad to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. I mean, because Any, every corner of the country that you go to would have unique and original endemic species. In this 10-day program, uh, we're trying our, our just 
a sampler. It's basically a sampler of Panama overall. It's like an overall sampler of the country. But I mean, in some of our programs, we've done 23 days uh, and gotten over 500 species. Uh, and that's going to various places. But in 10 days, you can only do so much. <laughs> yeah, any, any other quest questions out, out there? That was a good one, Ken, thank you. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions before we move on to and we can always go the back next to the question. Right. Yep, yep. And, and, uh, and, and you know, really, I, I just 20, 30 minutes of content just so we have time for questions. So you're doing great on time, my friend. Go ahead to the next place. Let's see. Let's we're, then we, we return to the canal area. Uh, and the, the beauty of, of the reason we like to go to the highlands uh, in the middle of the trip is because going up the mountains is much cooler. It's very pleasant. In the lowlands, it's usually warmer, right? So it's nice to take a break, go up to the mountains for a few days, cool off, enjoy the mountains, and then come back down to, to the warmer lowlands. And then we, we travel, I'm spending one or two days to um, bird around here a couple, a couple days. We go all the way down to the Darien. We go up, uh, making a stop in Cerro Azul, up in the foothills in Eastern Panama. And then we travel to Torti uh, in east, at the upper left quadrant of this circle in Eastern Panama. And some of you would actually venture all the way into the Harpy Eagle extension, if you wish. Uh, the beauty of, again, as you go from one place to another in the country, you come across a whole new set of bird characters, okay? This is a gorgeous uh, golden-headed mannequin. This is a white-tailed trogon that even though we can also see it around here, is far more common in, West, in Eastern Panama towards Darien province, right? Uh, this that you may recognize perhaps, or is similar to something you do recognize often back home, this is a cocoi heron. Cocoi heron from South America, from the Amazon. It makes it as far north as Panama, okay? You would not find it in Costa Rica or Nicaragua or anywhere else north of here. Panama is the borderline uh, of this South American bird. Uh, this is a beautiful cat heron, okay? Also, because along the way, when we drive down, uh, we did not do the entire journey in, in just straight through. It's, it's like a two and a half hour drive, but we break it up. So we, we stop in some wetlands, we stop in some marshes, we stop in some um, patches of forest along the way, so we can start seeing some of the South American birds down there. Of course, if, if the main highlight of going all the way to Darien, if you go in the Darien extension, is going in the woods to find the national bird of Panama the magnificent harpy eagle. If you're going on that extension, this will be the main highlight of the trip. But even if you don't go on, on, the, on the extension, actually, the harpy eagle has been seen uh, in other woods, in other parts of, of, the, of Eastern Panama as well, in San Francisco Reserve, where we normally go on the main trip, we, would, we have reported uh, the harpy eagle before. But the main, the highlight of the extension, if you go on that one, would be to visit uh, a harp, an active harpy eagle nest, where it's very likely that you will see either the, the parents or the chick, the, the harpy uh, chick. Um, okay, so. Hey, just um, a couple questions about the harpy um, yeah. guido. I do find that well over half of our customers who want to go to Panama, like, you know, they really want to do the Darien extension. You know, gosh, we've been doing business together for a long time. But, you know, I want to say 15, 20 years ago, getting the Harpy Eagle, you know, I had to sort of screen people out because it was an all-day walk, Something. often yeah, sort of bush bushwhacking in parts to get to the Harpy Eagle site. But those, those days, knock on wood, are, are gone. Like, typically... Typically, yeah. to get the harpy e eagle, people have to hike about how far? Well, we, we are, we're monitoring one way or another about eight different uh, harpy eagle nests at any given time. So depending on, on the timing or as the date of your trip <laughs> approach, we're going we're gonna to be able to tell, okay, this one has the younger chick, or in this one, they have recently made it. So it's more likely because, of course, the ideal scenario like these folks in this picture here, they actually saw the harpy eagle, e the eaglet, and we had a, a parent 
uh, the male came over and delivered uh, a monkey to the to the eaglet. So that was like a wow, like the best scenario. And that's why we try to uh, visit the harp, the younger, the youngest of uh, eaglet in the group. Uh, if, uh, that's why, because he has the greatest chances of us seeing parents coming over to deliver food or to taking care of the chicks. Mm -hmm. So an in, average, in, in the best case scenario, yeah, yeah. it would be like a two hour hike into the woods, which is the closest. But that's the worst. But typically recently it's been more like an hour or less. Yeah, right? exactly. One, one hour. But of course, if you're birding, you're, you're, I mean, there is such a unique forest that there are <laughs> lots of endemic species you might want to see along the way. But yeah, one hour, two hours. Of course. Uh -huh, on the way. Right. Hey, and just, and just um, remind me to, um, I mean, there used to be a couple of reliable sites in Brazil for Harvey Eagle, but they've all gone, gone, gone away. But um, the, the, the cycle for nesting is every three years or every five, I forget. Um, three years, every three years they should have. The harpies take care of their young for up to two years, okay? So once you've established a, a nest site, you're, you can go back to it for two years, roughly. Oftentimes, so if, you're, uh -huh. so if you're monitoring eight nests, you typically have three to five really good choices of where to see the bird. About four right. that, are really, that are very active at the moment. Sometimes they, two t they do take a, a one year off in between broods. So it's possible that they decide, okay, we're going to take off because it's too hard to raise this chick. Uh, and, and, but yeah, at least we have four definite active ones at any given time. Yeah, and, and beyond the harpy, like we've, we, just so you guys are aware, we always spend, we, we plan on three nights in the day, Arian, which is kind of the roughest lodging on the tour. But we hope to spend just two getting the harpy and the other Darien specialties mm -hmm. over a couple days. And then we can go back to Tortilla and do some additional nice birding. Yeah. So, so kind of what are the other, you know, sort of Darien specialties that you're looking for? We have, uh, so uh, the first, the, as we go on onto the Darien and Tortilla, we start getting a number of South American species that, that some of the highlights will be like a uh, barred puff bird, Orange crowned um, Oriole is really nice. Um, we get, um, well, the herons that I showed you already pictures for. Uh, the raptors are more um, plus, more common down that way. So we can get like crane hog, we can get all three hawk eagles, like the black and white hawk eagle, black hawk eagle, um, what's the other one? Black and white, black, and ornate hawk eagle uh, are possible. Uh, the king vultures are also very common white hawks, so it's an area rich in, um, in raptors. Uh, if we're lucky, also while looking for the harpy, we could potentially go visit also the crested eagle nest, which is actually rarer than, rare, rare than the harpy eagles. Uh, it will be certainly a highlight if you can swing by and get the crested eagle as well. So the two for the price of one. Uh, but Great. yeah, like you mentioned, uh, depending on which one nest we go to, if we manage, if the, if the closest one that you can do as a day trip and just go in, take a boat for 20 minutes, walk for an hour, and then there you are at the eagle nest. Bingo, we got it, we nail it down, and we can come back into quote unquote civilization, okay? So you don't have to stay too much time in the woods or because other of our nests, some of our nests are actually inside indigenous uh, villages, okay? Which means that you have to take a boat for like two hours and then basically camp at the Indian village uh, spend some time at the nest and then stay another night at the village and then come back out, okay? Those are the farther, more precarious or more challenging nests that hopefully we don't have to do, but that is a possibility uh, for the trip. But if we can get it done in the closer ones, we can come back to a, a nicer motel in the, on the way uh, with air conditioning and all the facilities, uh, and we can keep birding around the Darien province for some highlights, uh, potentially dusky back Jacamar, um, there's so many, and some of them are macaws. We have like the yellow, blue and gold macaw, the chestnut fronted macaw are possible in the Darien as well. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know, no, it's in, in Torquay is kind of the nicer area, right? Yeah. Torquay, the, the yeah, accommodations, yeah. the Avicar Hotel or the Avicar Hotel in, 
in Torte is one of the, it's perhaps the nicest accommodation in all of the Darien. It's got air conditioning, Wi-Fi, a swimming pool. Sometimes I'm not sure if they they fixed it up, but they were remodeling the swimming pool. Uh, you have a nice restaurant, so it's got the the most creature comforts. So that's where we like to hang out gotcha. the most, if possible. But 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 truly, there's just stacks of good birding at a torte. What are what are yeah, got it, yeah. got it. And um, right. And we were talking about a couple of days ago, uh, Charles, about the potential uh, of Panama also as a spectacular migratory route. So we get, you know, the, all the migrant species. If you come during this, the winter months while the birds are here or the fall, you can, fall migration, you can see a lot of the, you know, the migrant warblers, this is the orthonotary warbler. And if you come also in November or March, you can see the raptor migration. These are Mississippi kites that literally cloud our skies with hundreds of thousands of these raptors, Mississippi kites, broadwing hawks, uh, turkey vultures, and Swainson's hawks, literally during a few days of the year, literally cover our skies as they make their journey from South America into North America. And they're returning flight. Yeah, and just, and, just, and just to be clear what Gita was talking about, you know, our typical Panama tours, I mean, the sort of, quote, dry season is December to April, kind of creeping into May at times, but I mean, December to April. Um, but you know, with COVID, we're not sure. <laughs> we actually have a Panama trip we delayed from mid-March this last year, and I think we rescheduled it for February, Aerie. Hopefully we won't be postponing that tour again. But, um, but we are, you know, we realize a lot of birders are sort of anxious to get out and go birding. Um, and so we do want to add a fall Panama trip, and it is going to be focused on the, you know, in part, besides the typical birds, which will still be great, yep. um, you know, on these, you know, magnificent raptor mi migrations as well. Um, and truly, I've been talking to Guido on the phone in the past, and he whips the set elf phone and points it to the sky so I can witness <laughs> the fall migration. Um um so um so yeah so the fall trips we don't have yet on the website but um it is something we're thinking about and of course you know i think fall 2021 is an well you know knock on wood with a lot of hope um hopefully not too well i don't know i mean these days if we get a vaccine before now in march i'll be thrilled hopefully before that um but certainly the fall of 2021 i think it's okay to book a birding tour um and also just so everybody knows on not just panama but all of our birding tours we kind of have what i call the 100 day barrier which is about 100 days before your flight date we're going to have a conversation with the group um, to make sure everybody feels safe on the tour for most people that means a vaccine um for a lot of people for some people it just means a reduction in cases Hopefully, we'll have a you know some good news on a vaccine scene in September, October. Meaning, hopefully, we'll have it early next year. But no matter the case, 100 days before the start of the tour, we're going to have a conversation with the group if we should postpone or if everybody feels safe. We're going to move ahead with with the tour, and we're basically doing that. You know, one for your health and safety, of course. But two, just to protect your deposits and your, you know, your your payments on the tour. Once we paid lodges, usually if we postpone, we can get a full credit edit. So we just want to have that conversation far, far in advance of the tour. We also want folks to feel safe, and we want you to feel comfortable booking that you won't lose your trip to deposits. Um, yeah, I'm talking about business. Go ahead and talk more about birding. So anyway, I, I also wanted to, to share with you a little bit uh, of why your trip is so meaningful to us. And that is because uh, in our journeys to explore different sites for birding, we've gone to various other mountains and regions of Panama that you would not be going to this time on this trip. But that's how we found this one mountain called Cerro Chucanti in the Darien that you see there in the circle. This mountain is very large. It's about 5,000 feet high. It's got beautiful scenery, uh, waterfalls and, and forests. And, uh, but, and, and we found a number of interesting species like this black spider monkey, which is a critically endangered species that we found in this one trip to this mountain. 
but also we found a, a, an endemic buried solitaire, which is only found in the high mountains of the, of the Darien, in this mountain, but also we met some people and we, we witnessed how a lot of the local people were cutting down the rainforest for logging and for cattle ranching and farming. So actually we were um, faced with this um, scenario and we actually decided to do something and we actually established a private nature reserve with some of the funds that we got from tours like yours, we were able to purchase uh, different plots of land in the Darien. And this far we have over a thousand five hundred acres of rainforest that we're trying to protect, we're protecting as a fact. And we have also found in this forest, not just cool birds, but very unique uh, wildlife. This is a salamander that we discovered in this one property and had never seen before in, in history. And this is a new species of a snake that was also discovered in this mountain that we pro are currently protecting uh, called Cantilla Berguidoi. And we found this beautiful Heliconia flower, never seen before in history, discovered at this one site called Heliconia Berguidoi. As you can see, uh, the scientists that discovered the plants and the snakes, uh, because of our efforts of trying to protect this rainforest, named the species after me. That's why they have the Berguido um, surname <laughs> there in, in the species. So we're finding not right. that we have more than 45 new species of plants and animals that we have discovered at this one mountain that we sort of stumbled across looking for cool birds. We found more than 45 species of snakes, frogs, orchids, plants in general. So we have, we're very thankful for the support you guys are giving us to attend Panama with us because this way you're protecting an area with, this is a nonprofit that we started as a result of this initiative called Adopt the Rainforest. And so we're thankful and I'm sure you're gonna be feel, feel good that by coming to Panama, you're not just enjoying cool birds, but you're in, uh, helping us protect the rainforest down here. So thank you very much guys. Yeah, hey, and um, Guido, I got a question from um, uh, one of the one of the participants about you know birding neck. He he looked at that uh, that uh, harpy eagle photo, and you know people are pretty craned up to look at the bird. But um, truly, it it sort of raises a good quest quest question. You know, I do find you know um, upper canopy birds way up in the trees. You know, that does break your neck a little bit. Um, but truly, out of the, say, 400 species on the tour, how many are really way, way, way up in the canopy just on a percentage guess basis? That's, you know, that's one of the reasons I, I, we like to spend uh, quite a few days here in the canal area, not just because we have 500 species to look for, but by staying a few days around here, people in the group that have splitting views of a bird on, on the day one, basically birds are not... It's not, unfortunately, as you know, it's not a zoo. So it's not like the birds are going to sit there for an hour or half an hour for you all to take a look in the scope or to enjoy every single angle of the birds. That's not going to happen, unfortunately. They come, they, it's a moving mixed flock, and they come and go. But by staying a few days around here, you get second and third chances of seeing some of the birds that you may have perhaps missed or that you have flitting views up in the canopy. But I'd say uh, flipping, well, it, it's, that's, that's a problem when you don't have too much time. But I'll say about half, uh, let's say like 65% of our birds, you'll see okay, uh, pretty decent views. Uh, like 35% are going to be like flitting views. I just went through with a flock or up in the canopy. Um, yeah, it's challenging, but fun at the same time. Yeah, but, but, but of that 35% that are, you know, further up in the trees, how many are way up in the trees where you got to really break your neck for maybe 20, 30 species? Yeah. Or... Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so Greg, to answer your questions, there is certainly some high up neck birding species, but I would say well over 80, 90% of the birds are, are pretty gettable with a good pair of binoculars. Yep. Um, out there and truly one of the best solutions to birder neck is a good pair of bins not 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 to plug my my good friends at like and uh <laughs> Swarovski. oh my gosh um but but truly a good pair of bins are your best your best investment to uh rest the birder neck a I little mean, bit and, and enjoy the birds and that's the truth 
if, if, if you miss uh, 10 or 20 species, you still have 300 and some species that you saw. I mean, it's, it's certainly fantastic. Right, and then, and then we had another question um, of the thousand species in Panama, how many are resident compared to uh, seasonal migratory birds? About of a thousand or so, thousand and ten roughly, because we we keep adding. Actually, we, we added two new species to the country uh, <laughs> like two weeks, uh, two months ago for the global big day. We added at least two new species that were never reported for Panama. Uh, one from North America, the red-winged blackbird, and one from South America, <laughs> the, the, the how do you call this one? The, um, the not the what is it that the one that uh that is on the like wetlands it's a tall or land bird it's a, it's a screamer the northern screamer I was oh gotcha one. yeah the northern screamer just uh was reported for the first time in the darien uh back in may so yeah gotcha. there's a lot of birds but, but out of those thousand birds how how many are red evidence about 800 of them are resident uh okay. of the of the 800 maybe about 700 and so are like regular and some of them are of course like accidental there are a few records here and there like you know what yeah and and, and 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 truly um panama and i'll mention it coast costa rica have at, at one point in time they 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 had this sort of crazy contest of who had the biggest bird list and so <laughs> <laughs> when guido throws out a thousand and ten <clears throat> species seen in paint and, and I'm mentioning the most recent two. Um, it's truly this this contest between Costa Rica bird guides and Panama bird guides about which country has the most species. Um, and Panama just keeps keeps squeezing in a couple more. And I think that's pretty funny. And, and um, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, Charles uh, Costa Rica because even though we do share quite a bit of species between Panama and Costa Rica, um, there are a few species that are found in Costa Rica, but are extremely, extremely rare to be seen in Costa Rica. Like, you know, like Austrian right. and bird, the Rufus Vente ground cuckoo. They do occur in both countries, but they're far more easy to see here in Panama. Like, uh, the you bird. just might oh, add. Uh -huh. um, yeah, no, I, I mean, love that competition. I mentioned, the, I mentioned this because uh, sometimes uh, okay. people say, oh, should I go to Panama? I don't know, I've been to Costa Rica a few times already. I don't know if I'm going to add that many species. And we've had people that have been to Costa Rica a number of times, have been to Ecuador a few, a couple of times, and they think, man, I'm not, I'm not going to get that many new birds in Panama. And they're really surprised when they get like 70 live birds in Panama. Really cool. Yeah. Now, um, we also had a question about the crested eagle. Um, truly, it's not like a target bird on, on the trip at all. You usually find it more in the Darien yes. or it's all over. It's in the Darien. That's, yeah. We're also, we're and, and, and of a couple nests. Yeah, and of like say twenty Darien trips, how often do you see crested eagle? The thing is that like you said there. is not the target. That we focus yeah. on, on the harpy. And for yeah. the crested eagle, we also monitor like four or five nests. Uh and mm -hmm. so we have to make it a trip to go there. So if we get the harpy on day one of the extension trip. And we're like, hey, you know, we might try the crested eagle. Why not? Gotcha. Gotcha. And so you get it on maybe two-thirds of all trips or three-fourths of all? No, because we focus on the harpy, and we, don't, we only have like three yeah. days in the field down there. Uh, right, so we're going right. To some of the and once you're there, you're out of there. So if, if we are going to the farther harpy eagle nest that takes two days to get to, we do not have time. So I'd say like 30% of the time, a third of the time, we have time to go see the, the crested eagle. Yeah, so, so to answer that question, um, it's always in play, but about a third of all trips, you know, just depending upon the success of Harpy Eagle on the first day, okay. you know, about a third of the time, we got plenty of time to go give a try for the crested eagle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there you go. And if we knew it was a life bird for somebody like, like the person asking the question, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'd probably make an extra effort to make sure we got it. And if, um, for, for upcoming trips in the future, if, if we know that some of the participants would certainly like to see uh, crested because they're actually rarer than the harpies, uh, we could make a longer extension, like an extra day or two, to make sure we fit in a trip to see the crested. Right. 
Um, any questions about Panama birding before we take a yard walk? And we may, while, while you prepare for the yard walk, you want to try the yard walk, Guido, you're terrified to switch to your phone. Charles, quick question from Ken. Do you see black yeah. pearl pendula when you're down in the Darien? Yes. Good. <laughs> oh, we got a, what do we got at the theater there? Is that a, a it's goofy or something? It's okay. a Central American agouti. Okay. And we'll get to that question in a second, Ken. We're just going to take a look at the field yeah, here. We, we do have um, um, a... This is live, there. by the way. <laughs> that Central American agouti is... Well, the, I think the screen has stopped or it's frozen. I don't know. No, no, it's moving now. <laughs> it's uh, Central American little, agouti. Yeah, a little, a little mammal watching here. Um, so you taking a walk around the yard there, Guido? You know? Well, it started to rain, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, we can try. Let's see. Well, we can try Ken's question too and see what happens, or we can try a little walk here. So, so this is the grounds of the so, so I can't pronounce it. The Soberania Lodge, um, right. in the Gamboa area of Panama. And again, you know, he's got about 200 birds on his yard list. Instead of duty, is taken off there in the lower part of the screen. <laughs> I think you're shooting this with your. Now you're with. Now you're on your smart smartphone. Or are you doing with? Yes, I am. Computer. Okay. And then goes that a goody. You can decide if you want to make that a life mate and we'll take or not. Sometimes we have like, like sloths up in the trees here. Actually, we do have, believe it or not, we have harpy eagle in our yard list. <laughs> because um, the, the Peregrine Fund did um, a release program. And uh -huh. there were 14 harpy eagles here in, in the canal area. <laughs> There's still a couple of harpy eagles uh, that, that are potentially found in this area. Oops. But a lot and more fun to get in the dairy, I think. I wanted to show you. I'm um, sure I'm going to because um, no, hey, actually, oh, it's still there. I can see it in here. There's a boa constrictor that was hanging around here. Let's see Looking for a boa constrictor. Yes, it's there. <laughs> it was trying to eat it. A uh, 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 something wrong with the tia. What, what am I forgetting its name? Middle there. I'm not sure why I cannot. Oh, yeah. It. Wait. Where's he at? I know Can you I don't want to get too close. This is a small one. This is a juvenile. A little okay. boa constrictor, maybe. Yep, boa constrictor. And it's and it's bright, it's bright rump to Tia, right? Yeah. I think we should it's maybe move to eat eat a bird the other day. <laughs> yeah. I don't see the I don't see the boa constrictor, but I don't want you to get your, I don't know. Now, do they bite or they just constrict and then they eat? Can you see it? In the horizontal or diagonal branch there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> looking at the, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in, in that sort of branch sort of hanging down, that air branch, you just pull the branch back. There's a boa constrictor just lying in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I can see little heads moving. That guy yeah, wants so to. That's a young. That's a young beast. beast. So that that uh, it's raining here in the in Gamboa. <laughs> um, that, um, that boy is sitting there on the branch, waiting for a for a for a little bird to land on the perch or perch in the in that uh, branch, so it will capture it. It captured a bright, bright rump atila uh, two days ago. Actually, if you go on our social media, Adopta Bosque in a Rainforest Conservation Group, you could see the, um, uh, the, the video that we took of the boa uh, trapping the, um, this bright rump atila. Do you guys have any questions before it Force rain here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any other questions from the group? 
Yeah, we're about an hour in, into the call. It's gone really fast, actually. Any other quest, questions at all? I do have one. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. About about this proposed trip in the fall, uh, when I lived in Panama in the 1960s, in October, it rained all day, every day. I mean, when I lived in David, and um, so I'm, I'm wondering what month exactly you were thinking about that fall migration trip. No, the, the raptor migration does occur in, in, the, in the technically the rainiest months of the year, which is October, November. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's, I mean, it does potentially rain every day, but um, not, not always all day, I mean, most often not all day long. It usually rains for a, like an hour between between one of 12.30 and 1.30, almost like clockwork. I remember clearly because I, we did a, a program for the, um, the Raptor Research Group out of Seattle, Washington, in, in, in Washington State. And uh, we did an all Raptor migration program and they were uh, impressed because we would go in at lunchtime, okay? We, would, we have a beautiful day out burning in the morning and then we'd come back for like 11 or so for, for a break and lunch. And then we come out back after a break, like at two o'clock, and everything was wet. Like you had poured rain right in between that uh, lunch break, between 12 o'clock and one o'clock or so, it poured rain, like right now. It's raining right now, but it should stop actually in, in an hour or so. So unless there is a tropical depression or there's like a hurricane in the Caribbean that will create more rain than usual, the, the normal is that it will rain for about an hour around noontime. <laughs> well, that's very different than when I was there. <laughs> I taught oh. school, and so I was quite aware of the rain pounding on the roof all yeah. day long when I was well, trying to teach. In, did you live in the uh, Puerto Armuelles area by any chance? Well, I visited Puerto a lot, but, and, and I lived in Concepcion for a while, but David was mostly where I lived. And oh. I mean, I, I, in Concepcion, I remember people saying the rosary at five in the morning, doing a candlelight parade, you know, sort of ritual every morning in October. And half the time they were doing it in the pouring rain at, at five in the morning. So wow. I don't know, I get, but that was a long time ago. And I guess maybe the maybe climate has changed. And Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hala que si, hmm? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, Good question. Any any other questions from the group? Sorry to chop you off this thing, Sarah. This is Bill Loftus. I just wanted to say congratulations on having species named for you. And keep up the good work on your uh, your protection of those habitats because we need to have the habitats in order to have the species. Exactly. Thank you, you guys that support our, our work so that we can protect the rainforest as well. Yeah, and just and, and just a couple couple little things about the partnership for international birding, and then we'll probably close up the call. We'll have another chance for some more questions here, but we are getting long into the process. But um, we always do use premier local, local bird guides like Guido Bear Guido, who again has been a guide for over 20 plus years, both birder and conservationist in Panama. Uh, but because we're not flying guides from around the world, but using those local experts, our prices are often 20 or 30% less than our competition. Competition, we do keep our group sizes small, which I sometimes forget to say, but often groups of six to eight people. Um, and then we, um, we always save an acre for bird conservation. Um, we do work with various groups, um, but in 15 years in business, we've saved over 85,000 acres. Um, and Guido stuff is really on top of, on top of what we, we do. Um, that's his thing. Um, but we truly, uh, you know, admire Guido's work. Um, but, uh, you know, so when you book, book with us, small groups, expert local guides, and supporting bird conservation is just part of how we do it. Um, any other questions at all? Yeah, this is Becky. 
I wanted to find out what type of vehicle do you use? Do you have like uh, that everybody can fit in the same car or bus or van or? Yeah, we, we usually, we have a, a 16 passenger van. Uh, oh, okay. That's the one we use. And since our groups are usually uh, six people or maximum eight people, we're, we're okay in that one. Mm -hmm. So everybody has that a was, chance was... to be able to see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. And most of the birding exactly. is not really done in, in the van. We stop and bird, stop and bird uh, when we're doing driving. Okay. Translate, we're, we're, we're um, moving from one place to the other. We make birding stuff along the way. We don't really do much car birding per se. Mm. Yeah, and, and Guido, that's a Mercedes 80 Sprinter or something different? Again? The, that's a Mercedes 80 Sprinter or that's... Um, so it's a Toyota. It's a Toyota. It's a high ceiling Toyota uh, high ace vehicle. Got, I, got it. I got it. But it's a high ceiling 16 seat yeah. here. Wait, toy, Toyota. So plenty of room for eight participants plus guys and draw either. And you're ready to go. I love it. Um, and again, that's our maximum group, group size. Yeah. So we always so have plenty of room. room. And, and, and those vehicles, I mean, are, are pretty typical on the, all of our tours. Plenty of room. Um, any other questions at all? That was a good one, Becky. Just want to oh, thank I always have to say, administrator. Great, great presentation. Thank you so much. Thanks, 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 Steve. I think I think we're going to wrap up here. We'll give it just another minute. Any other quest questions at all? At at all? Little thumbs up there from the Loftus crowd. Nice little icon. They didn't know how this worked. Um, nice, nice, nice job, my friend. Hey, you guys, thank you, uh, participants. We appreciate you guys um, joining the call, and um, we'll see you the next time. And um, thanks for your little visit to Panama today, complete with the boa constrictor and the Central uh -huh. American agouti. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And the bird feet eater is just not cooperative, but that's, that's the breaks. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And thank, thank you, my wife. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good job.